Hey everybody, it's Eric here with Spartan Auto Works. Today we're going to talk about body control modules. Hopefully this will be a super short video uh, to address some of the issues and concerns uh, that people may have or misunderstandings people may have about the 03 up uh, GMT 800 trucks and SUVs uh, concerning the reprogrammability of body control modules. Uh, there's a myth uh, out there that most dealers are under uh, and most uh, small do-it-yourselfers or people in general that think that the O3 up body control modules cannot be reprogrammed. Uh, we sell them pre-programmed. You call us, <clears throat> we'll take your VIN number and we'll program it, ship it out to you and we're going to cover in this video the installation and the uh, security relearn procedure that you'll have to do after you put in one of these body control modules. So with that being said, uh, real quickly, there's two different types of body control modules, which you can see right there. The part numbers on these really don't make any any difference per se, uh, as long as you're getting the right one for your vehicle. Um, I guess I should say the part numbers don't really matter. There's two interchanges that cover uh, the two two specific body control modules. So the lower one right here is out of an SUV. The way you can tell that is it's got the pins in this top plug. Either that's going to be crew cab truck or SUV, um, you know, Suburban, Tahoe, Yukon, etc. Um, if it's got the plugs there. This one here came out of an extended cab truck and it doesn't have any, any plugs back here on this top plug. As for the other plugs on the bottom, um, there's five plugs on the bottom. Those are all the same, uh, so those don't matter. It's just the it's just the top plug uh, that matters for what you have. But the easy way to identify it is if you have these um, pins coming out of the top plug on the top side of the connector, that is either for a crew cab truck or for a full size SUV. So now very quickly, I'm going to uh, show you what needs to be removed in order to install this body control module. You will have to remove the lower dash panel and you'll also have to remove the top trim bezel that goes around the steering wheel. And holding the bottom um, steering column cover on, there's two seven millimeter bolts. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that real quick. All right, so now that that's all removed, under the very bottom shielding cover of the, uh, there's like a little metal cover under the steering column right there, you'll see the five wires going into the body control module. Uh, you'll have to unplug those wires, plus you'll have to reach behind and pull the very top plug out. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop the camera and go ahead and do that now. All right, so here's the new body control module that I've programmed on the bench. This one's actually out of a 03 Tahoe, I believe. Uh, we have an 04 Suburban. Uh, like I said, it's got the correct pin assignment at the top, if you can see that there. Um, I've already removed the other one. I'm going to go ahead and throw this guy in, then we'll cover the procedure to reprogram the body control module back to the PCM so the car will start. All right, so we've got the new body control module in for sake of time uh, because I'd like to make this a short video. I've already gone ahead and done the 30 minute key relearn. The first thing you would notice if you put in a different body control module that wasn't programmed it would be that the car is not going to start and that the radio is going to stay been locked. When you get one from us, because it's already programmed, the uh, radio will match the BCM uh, VIN number, so therefore it will the radio will work, so you won't have any issues there. Uh, the next thing you'll have to do is you're going to have to do the handshake between the BCM and the PCM, uh, or the pass key, or the pass lock relearn. So anyway, it's going to take you 30 minutes. Uh, the first thing you need to do is put a jump, pi jump pack on the battery. Uh, you want to make sure it doesn't drop below 11.5 volts. Uh, the best thing to do is probably make sure the battery is fully charged. Uh, you can use a battery charger, but I kind of prefer clean power through a jump pack. Um, so the first thing you have to do is obviously click up your power, 
um, then you're going to put the key in, you're going to turn the key to the run position. Then you're going to try to crank the vehicle for two to three seconds. After two to three seconds, rotate back to the run position. You're going to set your watch for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, you're going to cycle the key. Now you don't want to do it too fast and you don't want to do it too slow. I usually tell people to do a nice key rotation. So from run to off, wait two seconds, back to the run position. Now you're gonna do this total three times. Only on the first time are you going to do uh, where you try to crank the vehicle. The second and third time, there's no cranking required. And if you do, it actually messes up the procedure and you gotta start all over. So like I said, the first time, go to run, try to crank the vehicle for a couple seconds. We'll turn it back to run, wait 10 minutes. The security light should be illuminated and after 10 minutes it will go off. Turn the key off, turn the key back to run, wait 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, the security light should be off. Then go from run to off, back to run. And after 10 more minutes, the security light should go off. And after that, you'll cycle the key back off and then you'll cycle it back to run and start and the vehicle should crank right up. Now, one of the other things I didn't mention because I was trying to make this a quick video, uh, make sure that you disconnect the battery before working on any electrical components. Um, I've done this a thousand times without doing it, but for your own safety, it's probably best. Uh, the most common issue I hear from people is the, I did exactly what you told me, because we always include the instructions, did exactly what you told me, and the car still has a security light, and the car still won't crank, um, or still won't run. It'll crank, but not run. 99% of the time, uh, it's from failure of doing the correct procedure of the key relearn. Uh, I sold a PCM a couple weeks ago to a guy named Brian in Montana. Uh, he called me, and I could just already hear it on the other side. He's kind of questioning whether or not the PCM was actually going to work. And I said, you know, it had to be your key relearn. I said, try the key relearn over, and you'll be okay. He tries the key relearn over, calls me back 30 minutes later, said everything was good, no worries. Um, so. The most common thing I get is people that fail to do the key relearn correctly. I would say a lot of it has to do too with voltage. Make sure you turn off all the accessories in the vehicle, headlights, anything you can turn off in the vehicle, uh, especially if you're gonna do this without a jump pack or without a battery charger. Uh, turn off anything that's gonna draw power because if the, the vehicle goes low on power, the key relearn never ever takes. Um, the key relearn is gonna be the most difficult part of the whole procedure. Uh, when you call us to order a BCM, there's a few things we need to know. Number one, the most important is the full VIN number. Uh, number two, do you have keyless entry or no keyless entry? Number three, uh, which isn't required in all vehicles, but uh, if you have manual mirrors, tow mirrors, or regular power mirrors, uh, those three things can help speed up getting the body control module out to you. Um, especially if you order over the internet to us. Um, if you can't include all that, because sometimes we can't always get it on the weekend. We can't get a hold of the dealer. So I can't look up that information before I program it. Um, and if I don't have that information, it's something I got to ship out right away and I can't wait. You know, I'm going to have to take a guess on and just hope for the best. So if you can please contact us with all your information. VIN number, does it have keyless entry or no keyless entry? And also what kind of power mirror option does it have? And we can get everything programmed up to you shipped out to you It'll come with manual instructions on how to um, um, do the 30 minute key relearn uh, but this kind of a brief overview uh, if you have an 05 up truck one of the issues you may run into is the airbag light will be on uh, if the airbag light is on on the 05 up truck you have to get a scan tool to remarry the scan the the airbag module to the bcm uh, we have another video on that it's pretty easy uh, to follow it takes literally 30 seconds if you got a scan tool to do it. Um, if you have a 99 or 903 to 0, uh, 4 truck and the airbag module's on, or the airbag light is on, um, read the code. It's probably going to say restrain ID is incorrect or value is incorrect. If that is the case, um, you can try the 30 minute relearn procedure over again. 99% of the time that will fix it. If that doesn't work, the only way to go, unfortunately, you have to go to somebody with a SPS terminal uh, and you'll have to do the 10 minute VTD relearn uh, in order to clear that light. Um, unfortunately, we don't run into that, that, that problem very often, but every once in a while you do get a truck that just wants to hang and it doesn't want to uh, relearn the restraint IDs. Uh, for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. 
you will need a seven millimeter socket, also a pick tool or an angle pick tool also helps. Uh, the bottom plug, um, when the body control module slides in under uh, the column, it's got like a holder. The, the top plug I was showing you that mattered, whether it was a regular cab, extended cab, or if it was a crew cab or SUV, that top plug that I was talking about faces down. Um, so you don't have to reach to the back and get that. Then the other three plugs that are in the middle of that body control module pull out very easily. It's the outside two that have uh, kind of like a push pin tab type deal. And that's where this guy comes in very handy. If you have any questions, please give us a call, 636-795-6960. And before you replace your body control module, uh, please do good diagnosis. I hate to send out something to somebody that they don't really need uh, because once we send them out, obviously I'm, I can't return them. Um, so please make sure that that's really what you need before you order one from us. And most common questions is what, why, how would I know if I need a body control module? If you get a lot of weird interior options, acting up, radio acting up or dying out, speedometer, the whole thing dropping out, uh, key locks not working, um, and 99% of the time if you shut the car off and turn it back on or disconnect the battery and plug it back in, uh, it clears itself and everything works for a little bit, 99% of the time I'd say it's probably a body, or body control module. Uh, but please do your best to ask around, do a little research or good diagnosis before you buy one. Um, I hate just to throw parts at a vehicle if you don't really need to. So please, please, please make sure it's got the correct diagnosis before you uh, get a body control module and find out that it was some other issue. But like I said, if you have any issues, contact us here at Spartan Auto Works, 636-795-6960.